Okay, if you happen to see our ice fishing for smelt video, um, you'll know where these guys came from. If you didn't see that video, we'll, we'll go back and watch that one first. I'll wait. Um, but right now, it's time to cook these bad boys up. Uh, we've got 10 of them that we're going to prepare. Five we're going to do in one way, five we're going to do in another. My two favorite ways of doing them. And uh, you know, minimal ingredients needed to take care of this, and you get a pretty tasty treat in the end. So, yeah, overall, you don't really need much. A couple of plastic bags, some seasoning, salt, pepper, um, an egg for one of the ways we're doing it your preferred batter for one type. I, you know, I use Fish Crisp or the, the Daryl Cronzy's Canadian Fisherman one. Those are my favorites. Uh, but whatever breading you have, if you have a homemade recipe, do that. And you'll need some butter and some cooking oil and well, smell. Um, tea is also essential. If you do not have a Tim Hortons tea while you're cooking rainbow smelt, you're probably doing everything wrong. So yeah, we're gonna get right into this and uh, you know follow along and when you get a chance, try it out yourself. Now, growing up, the way I was always taught about how to prepare smelt, uh, it always involved a pair of very large scissors. Uh, they're a small fish, it doesn't take much to clean them at all. And uh, like I said, we always did it with scissors. Uh, a quick cut to the head, cut to the tail, cut up the belly. That was it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not gumming up my scissors with fish guts. So for right now, we're gonna start with these little guys. You know, that's all they are. They do get bigger than this, but not much. This is about the normal size you're gonna get. You might find some slightly larger ones if you do buy these from uh, your local grocery store if they carry them. But uh, when you can catch them, that's a good size to go with. So I'm gonna start by cutting off the head. You might get some of the innards coming out. Now, the heads and innards and such, well, let me just get this one out of the way. I'm actually gonna put up in a separate bag. Cut the tail off. I'm gonna do the heads and tails first. And then we'll go to the insides. But I tend to save the heads and tails you know, if I'm making up a, a bait mix later in the season, I'll have those in the freezer. And if I want a really fishy bait mix, let's say I'm fishing for catfish or um, perhaps uh, pike or something like that, I can, you know, throw that in a blender, mix it all up with some other, uh, you know, ground baits and things like that. And it just adds another fishy element to it to help draw those, those eat big fish in. So. Taking the, the innards, the heads, all this stuff, tails off. You will find it's a little bit tricky to do the tail, um, just because that's the thickest part of the spine, I find. But yeah, once you take the head and tail off, you're pretty much just left with a piece that looks like that. Um, so I'm gonna do the rest of these heads and tails, and then we'll come back and we'll actually do the bellies, clean out the innards, and get going from there. Okay, so there's all the heads and tails off. Pretty much you've just got these, I guess, torso sections of sorts. So, to do the rest of the cleaning part, um, basically when you hold this piece of smelt in front where the head was, you know, like I said, most of the guts came out. So you're left with this open cavity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert the knife or if you go back to the traditional methods of using scissors, the scissor blade, and just a little cut right up through all the way down to the tail. And if there's anything else to clean out, basically it's just a quick thumb shot right through the middle. You know, this time of year, you know, you could be taking out egg sacs, um, could be just remaining um, innards that were left. Um, you know, it's really not much, but we want to get those pieces out. Make sure it's all clean. So 
you're gonna do that with all of them. Again, just in the hole through the front, trim all the way down to the tail. And in a manner of speaking, you're, you're pretty much butterflying this open. And just slide the thumb through to clean out the rest. You know, get all the innards out, clean it all up. And uh, there's no harm in just taking the bottom fins off. Um, you don't really want them there. They usually just pull off nice and easy. I'll show you one more time before I do the rest of them. The opening right here, right in the front, right up the belly, quick slice, and then right down to the tail, or where the tail was. Uh, again, just be very careful. Scissors makes it real easy, real fast. But, you know, a knife will do the job. Filet knife, any kind of, you know, paring knife, kitchen knife. For me, that's just a steak knife. And then you have the fins on the bottom. Just quickly give those a little tug they pull off. And then you've got butterfly piece of smelt right off the side. You will feel the rib bones in there. You'll feel the spine. Don't worry about that. If you want to scale them, you can, but the scales are so minute. In the end, with what we do, you don't even notice them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these ones, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so that's our 10 smelt all cleaned and prepped. Um, so now they're ready for the next stage. So we're gonna clear some of this stuff off, get ready for the next stage, which means I'm gonna have to heat up a pan. Um, we got our heads and guts and tails that are gonna go in this little bag in the freezer with uh, I don't know, other frozen bait fish and such that I have for when I wanna make up some bait mixes later in the season. Um, another good tip is uh, where your regulations allow it, um, you know, saving things like this, quite often the, the eyeballs of a smelt can be good bait for smelt. Um, also, it can be for perch as well, if you just tip a jigging spoon or something with that, but make sure you check your local regulations first. Uh, depends on where you are, that's gonna dictate whether or not you can use that as bait. So, uh, from here on out, I'm gonna clear the stove off here. We're gonna get a pan heated up with some, uh, some stuff. And we'll go over the first technique of preparing our first five and uh, then we'll move on from there okay so right now we're just going to get our pan ready we're just heating that up we're going to go with just slightly under medium high heat and this first way of prepping the way we're going to do our first five we need butter you can use margarine if you want if that's your preference personally I prefer butter. It's fattening, gives you cholesterol, but it tastes way better. So go with that. I'm just gonna let that melt down, move it around in the pan. Probably ruin the shot, because I'm not paying attention to where the camera angle is, but that's fine, we're cooking. It's all an adventure. And uh, if need be, turn the heat down just a bit. You know, I put a pretty big chunk in there, but bigger the chunk, the more the flavor, the more the cholesterol, the more the fattening. Good stuff. Just use a fork, move it around, get that butter to melt, uh, preferably as evenly as possible so you get a nice good bed of butter down there. At this stage, while the butter's melting, you know, adjust your heat, but uh, I like to add a little salt and pepper into the butter. find it a little bit easier to cook the smell in the seasoning rather than add it directly to the fish. I just find it adheres better this way. I'm gonna get that a little bit hotter. So we'll go almost maxing out on the medium high heat. I'm gonna get that hot. 
uh, this cooks these. They're small fish, so they're gonna cook real fast. And that's heating up well. We've got our salt and pepper in there, and we're gonna add in the smelt. And I always try to open up the butterfly so that you can put the spine down and it kind of flattens it out. So again, open that up, flatten that out right in the butter. Obviously be very careful doing this. I'm a seasoned professional. I cook all my own meals, so I really know what I'm doing. And we're pretty much just going to sit there and sizzle these bad boys right in the butter. And you'll see that they'll flatten out a little bit more. We won't be giving them too long. Just do them sizzle. Now, the nice thing about this method is that you don't have to do it when you get home in the kitchen. This can be done on the bank, on the ice, you know, right in the ice hut. We've done it this way. All you do is you take a stick of butter, some salt, some pepper, and something to cook with. And like I said, just using the scissors out of your tackle box. Do the same job, and easily you can get a nice little snack of smelt right there on the water. Already, that's going to cook sides. Now we just want to cook through the back. It wasn't really more than a minute, minute and a half, I would guess. If that. Just flipping them over. You can see it kind of opens up in butterflies. Once the way we put it, it kind of stays that way. Now we're just cooking the back. They're going to curl up a little bit. This is the part where they get super tasty because the butter gets right into it with the salt and the pepper. The nice thing is, is as I said before with the scales, they pretty much just cook away. You really don't notice them. The bones are so tiny and so fragile that, again, cooking it just pretty much disintegrates them. You might get a slight crunch out of the spine, but again, you really don't notice it. And if it's cooked right, the spine just pulls out anyways. You can see right there, depending on what utensils you're using, for the most part, you can just pull the spine right out. I tend to do it afterwards, but you can see how easily the spine comes out just while you're cooking it and just leave it there. And those are done. I'm actually going to remove that from the heat. And our first five are complete. Okay, for the next stage, this is where we're going to actually do up a batter uh, for these five smelts. So for the batter, you know, generally you would be doing more, but we're going to do an egg. Because everything healthy starts with an egg. Right the shell. I'm just going to whisk that up quickly with a fork. I'm just going to add a slight bit of milk to that. Thin that down a bit. It's going to be nice and thick. Okay, so next 
I mentioned before there was two types of the kind of the breading or the commercially available um, batter mix that uh, I like the fish crisp or the uh, the Canadian fisherman's breading and batter mix um, those are my personal favorites if you have your own recipe or different ones that you like uh, or different flavored seasonings that you like you know use whatever you prefer uh, but the way I do it is I throw it in a Ziploc bag I just roll down the top get my smelt again open it up kind of butterfly it out pull that fin off we don't need that yeah. okay and I'm just going to dunk it right into the egg get it nice and coated and once it's coated in egg drop it in the batter mix give it a shake make sure it all gets covered you know there's been times where I want to make sure that it's getting a good thick layer of batter, so um, I'll do it in the egg again, batter again. Again, just put the next one, open it up. Make sure we're covering everything in the egg. Dunk it in the batter. At this point, it's gonna be messy. Just go with it. Part of the cooking adventure. Okay, everything's gonna be clumpy and messy at this point. So take a few minutes to clean everything up and heat up uh, a pan full of oil. So in this case, uh, just as you would traditionally with like a deep fryer or such, you're gonna heat up the oil to again, medium high heat. And once that's hot enough, we're gonna dunk those smelt in there. Okay, so while you're heating up your oil, I just drop a couple of pieces of the batter in just to test it out, make sure I've got it at the heat that I want. And once they really start fizzing and going, it's time to get right down to business. And just gently set those in there. If you have tongs, use them. It's always smarter to be prepared with the proper tools so that you don't burn your fingers. So I put three in. I'm just gonna spread the oil up over top. You know, I don't do a lot of oil to completely submerge them. It's just wasteful with the oil. Just enough to kind of cover half, and then you can kind of spread them around and flip them. Get the other two in. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you're doing larger batches, let's say you have 20 or 30 smelt, you had a really good haul that day. What I would suggest is do them in groups of five. That way you're not adding too much to the hot oil, which will then drop its temperature really quickly. Um, and it takes a little bit longer for them to cook. So in those particular cases, do it in batch of five, take them out, do another batch of five, um, just for the sake of maintaining a hot temperature. Again, just like we did when we fried it in butter, it's gonna go really fast. You'll find it gets to a really nice golden brown. So flip that over if your utensils will let you. And you see how quickly that goes to a nice golden brown, kind of like the perfect battered fish color. This is this is this is almost art. This is this is truly a work of natural art in my kitchen. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna turn the heat off and these delectable little morsels are cooked. So I'm going to take them out. We're going to let them cool. And we're going to get those ready to serve. Okay, so here we are with the finished plate. Smelt cooked in two different ways. We've got right here the nice butterfly smelt fried in butter 
so with that being kind of on the softer side, um, you know, having removed the spines, it's going to be very soft in texture. So add a crunchy garnish with it. You can add fries. I prefer broccoli salad. Makes it a little bit nicer. Uh, looks a little bit better too. And then over here we have the battered and deep fried smelt. And because that's going to be crispy, crunchy, go with a softer salad. A little bit of macaroni salad mixed with pepper. So yeah, there's dinner all set. See that's going to be nice and crispy on the outside, super tender on the inside, great little snack.